Guys, we just got out of Black Panther. We got out of Black Panther. Just now! At an early screening. Man, the crowd didn't clap. Everyone just hated this movie. I'm sure you can tell that it's probably not going to be a good movie. But I think we can all agree that Martin Freeman and Andy Serkis really they stood They really out. stole the show. They really did. It was really their it was movie, you know? Predominantly African-American yeah. movie. <laughs> We're going to do our reasons to see and reasons not to see list. It's our review format we've been reintroducing again onto the channel. Just so we have a way of breaking down the film in an easier format for us and for you to get our point of view on things. Fun! So let's get into this, shall we? And heads up, we're going to be doing a spoiler review for this movie. By the time it's actually released, give some people time to watch it so then, because we don't want to be those guys who ruin everything, even though there'll be people who will be doing that already. Up before it's even out. Yeah, we should just do that and then the non-spoiler. Two weeks <laughs> ahead. <laughs> All right, so reason to see number one would have to be, obviously, Chadwick Boseman. He is amazing in this film. Yeah, he's not necessarily the flashiest performance, but he really does he's embody. The lead, yeah, yeah, he really does lead this film. Yeah, because this story is, about, as you can pick up from the trailers, it's about T'Challa becoming king of Wakanda, and he's learning his position on being a king. There's also a very specific mission that takes place in this film that I don't want to give away yeah. because they don't really make it clear in the trailers. Through this whole journey, T'Challa does have some crazy learning lessons he has to go through. And he has a lot of scenes where he's super subtle and then scenes where he's very emotional. This guy has a wide range of emotions and oh, he yeah. pulls off every scene perfectly. Yeah. His interaction with the whole cast is great. Loved it. You, Loved it. You get to see him as a king, as a warrior, as the member of a family, yeah. you know, as a human, as a superhuman. Like he, he has so many different facets to his performance. And especially for the origin story quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got to learn not only how to be a leader in terms of traditions, but also really embody and confront the difficult parts that taking up you yeah. know leadership means and confronting yeah. the poor leadership decisions of the past like there's a lot of development for that character and he rocks it reason to see number two michael b jordan so Michael B. Jordan, as advertised in the trailer, plays Eric Killmonger. Boy, oh boy, mm -hmm. has the MCU given us easily, in my personal it's opinion, the best, best villain, villain yeah. that we've ever gotten. It's like Michael Keaton in Spider-Man Homecoming, I was like, okay, he's probably the best. This is a movie that you walk out of and you're like, oh yeah, no, there, no doubt about it. That was the greatest villain. Michael and that, Keaton that's is one of the well best. done. Yeah. This one works on multiple levels. Yes. You know? It's crazy to have an origin movie of Black Panther and then equally have a movie that has such a strong three-dimensional villain with mm -hmm. a crazy backstory and really elevated by Michael B. Jordan's performance. It is a performance that I connected with without giving anything away. It was weird because he's the villain of the movie, yet he was the one who probably got me the most emotional in the movie, too. You really understand where he comes from, and, and his struggle is on multiple levels, you know, because there's a personal element to his vendetta, there's a global element, there's like a cultural yeah. element. Like, you really get to understand yeah. this guy's philosophies inside and out, and he becomes a com really compelling villain because yeah. of that, because you get why he's fighting, and the face-off, you know, in terms of just the weight of yeah. him versus T'Challa is really beautiful. In a lot of ways, this is his movie, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, because yeah. they're at the core of a philosophical debate that will affect Wakanda. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, this is the sexiest Michael B. Jordan has ever been. Yeah. I, like, I was it's watching him at I when I was like... The, yeah, this guy's freaking sexy. I'd let my girlfriend he's, have sex with this guy. He's <laughs> scary, but he also just owns the room. Like, Yeah, I'd, I'd have sex with him. Reason to see number three. Lupita Nyong'o and Denai... Denai... Denai Guerrero. Denai Guerrero. But on this movie being a film that really celebrates African culture in a lot of ways and has a lot of black pride, which is one of the best elements of this movie. What are you doing? The other distinct side to this film is there's a lot of female empowerment in this film. Yeah. And these two characters, they're different characters. You know, it's like they're both badass Wakanda warrior women. Yeah, they are. One, uh, Lupita Nyong'o is more of the love interest character. Well, she's the more of the individual, whereas Denai Guerrero's character is very is much the loyal soldier. dedicated <laughs> yeah. to the state and yeah. to, the, to the throne, you know? Her performance, Lupita, she's that woman who's stubborn, but you see why you want her to be with T'Challa. And, mm -hmm. and they're chemistry 
chemistry on screen together is great. Their dialogue is awesome. And then deny the definition of a badass she woman in this film. So tough and so awesome. Like I like that actress on The Walking Dead. I think she's well, so I much love cooler her. here. Yeah. yeah, she's so much cooler here, and she has to learn a whole new art form with the spear that she uses in this mm -hmm. film. And man, does she know how to wield that thing, dude? Yeah. <laughs> that was some crazy ass work she was doing. She is tough. She is intimidating, and she's she's a but she's not just that too. She's someone who's very multi-layered and has a big heart. Both of these characters represent yeah, strengths fully of realized. women. And it's also just super fun to get to watch them all work together. Yeah. And, you know, go on, I don't know, I don't call it a mission, but, you know. Yeah, they go on a couple missions. Go kick some yeah. ass together, you know. It really does kind of share the mic in a way that isn't in your face and isn't, you know, distracting. It's just awesome. Reason to see number four. Letitia Wright. T'Challa's sister in this movie didn't know much about this character before watching it. All I heard was, we watched this with our friend Andrew Gordon, yeah. and he said, I hear that she is like as smart as Tony Stark. And I'm like, hmm. okay. And then I watched the film, and she is so cool. She is like yeah. that Tony Stark. She is that Q in terms of her intelligence level and ability to invent and create on a technological advanced level. Beyond that, she is so funny. She's the funniest one in the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah she brings a lot of heart and, and yeah, a lot of the good humor to things because yeah. she is really his she's younger a sister. She's yeah, a kid she's in the a movie. Kid. Yeah. Wait. Which side of the road is it? For bus sake, just try. Okay, calm down. Yeah, she has a very delightful performance and uh, yeah. just truly layered as well. I'm so glad you don't really see a lot of her in the trailers and stuff. You get like brief moments. I think she's a big surprise too that I hope more people will start talking about. Actually, well, that was the thing leading up to this film. She was one of the names I've heard the most and, and mm -hmm. one of the characters I knew the least about. And that was a real treat here. Again, she is so important and she gets to do some pretty awesome yeah. stuff along with yeah, everybody she else. Does. Even though it is Black Panther and it is T'Challa's movie, there is a lot of ensemble going on. Yeah, which moves on to our next reason to see. Reason to see number five, the whole supporting cast pretty much. Everyone's good in this film. I mean, the characters that we took time to give a specific reason for is because they're central. <laughs> they but, share a lot of screen time. But there's other supporting players in this film that got moments to shine too. It's, you know, when, when you see a large ensemble on screen, like, oh, I'm looking at Forrest Whitaker in the poster, Daniel Kaluuya, Angela Bass, it. Martin, Freeman. Martin Freeman, Andy Serkis. A lot of times when you see a bunch of big players, you usually walk out of a film like that going, I really wish they used this person more. I wish they used this person more. I wish they did something more with this character. Everyone, mm. everyone gets a chance to shine. Martin Freeman returns as Everett Ross. He's used to great effect in this film. Don't want to give anything Best away. Best Ross yet. Daniel Kaluuya, I don't even remember seeing him in the trailers, really. So I thought he was going to be like, oh, one of those actors that I would wish he did more. Yeah. And he plays yeah. a very different character than the rest. It's a different performance than what I've ever seen Daniel Kaluuya do either. And he's really good in the film. He has oh, a yeah. jury in the movie, too. Yeah, he's got a pretty emotional one, I yeah. would say. And Sterling K. Brown, who I didn't realize was in this I had no idea. Yeah. You know, Sterling K. Brown, it's he's just going to give another great man. performance. He shows up. That's what he does, man. <laughs> he shows up, touches you, and then leaves again. Forrest Whitaker, I immediately flashed to the fact that he was in Rogue One. I didn't really he's, care for him. He's playing this guy right now. Yeah, I thought but, he was good this in better. this movie. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was... He had great effect, and there were some yeah. subtle moments. Like I'm, I'm, I can think of very specific shots where I was like, that was a powerful look that he gave that mm -hmm. does a lot of meaning. Oh, visual he brought gravitas, man. Yeah. With his big purple robes and all. Winston Duke plays a pretty notable comic book character in this film. He He's a charming guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah he surprised me, man. He's he's he steals the scenes that he's in. One performance that really paid off. Andy Circus's claw. <laughs> hey, I can see you. <laughs> Oh, dude, he's so much fun to watch. Because we hadn't seen Claw since Age of Ultron, and no. usually when a character makes like a little cameo, they come back within a year of the MCU films. It's been yeah. a few years. And he comes back, and they give him way more to do in this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's a, he's a standout in the film, for he's sure. He's just a scoundrel, and you can tell he's having a blast, and it totally works. And he does bring a splash of, you know, humor yeah. to it pretty much every scene. He, he's <laughs> arguably the most animated character out of yeah. everyone in this film. Yeah. But he does it in a way where I just believe him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's something. And it's great to see him without mocap. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is. Just to be able to drink in and appreciate the character work that that guy's yeah. capable of. Because Arguably he should have just gotten his own category on our list here. I feel like, yeah, <laughs> if he had more screen time, you know, if, if, if there was more going on with him, then yeah. yeah. Reason to see number six. The writing and directing. This film kind of just throws you into it right away. And it's not long after where you're like, 
this is a very different Marvel film. <laughs> yeah. This is a world exploration of Wakanda. That all really pays off. It's like celebrates like African culture. And extrapolates it. Yes, exactly. And it addresses a whole bunch of issues about war and how black people are treated. <laughs> a lot of themes about leadership. And what was so fascinating to me, by the time this movie all wrapped up, it doesn't ever feel over bombarded too much information or too much stuff they're trying to all throw into one movie. It's a giant ensemble. Everyone's treated great in this film and all the themes are really communicated the themes are all spread out throughout the way the plot is unfolding and that's what was really cool is the the themes are always reflective in the plot at hand and the way the plot's executed is done super well it kept going places i wasn't expecting it to go even though it starts off pretty strong and like like whoa, we're throwing you into this it also is a build-up film the pacing is great while it deals with a lot of big world political issues it deals with a lot with super personal real things too the personal stuff within each of these characters is just as relevant and just as relatable and that's what makes it feel personal for such an epic scope of a film it feels very personal. Yeah, and I gotta applaud a movie that I'll start thinking something and then the movie 10 minutes later will start addressing that. Yeah, yeah. Because so many of those little political or even personal points are things where they crossed my mind and then the movie started to talk about them yeah. and, and I, I do gotta Mad applaud respect. them, especially in the writing for that, especially in the choice to go after some of those themes because this is an opportunity yeah. of a movie. You kind of jump into stuff in familiar territory and then the movie blossoms outward from yeah. there. The way in which they work their themes into everything because there is all the Marvel action and stuff that you want. They have the conversation in this movie. Like, Wakanda is a stronghold. What does that mean? Like, what is our relationship to the rest of the world? And they don't shy away from those and uh, and Killmonger's motivations are very much built out of abandonment and out of the atrocities that he's seen across the world and the sort of unfairness of it all. And the movie just confronts a lot of things. Even, even for T'Challa, it's not just like a standard origin story. No. He's really got to learn. He lessons that we haven't seen any other MCU character learn. Yeah, yeah, it's not just about the power and the mantle and, you know, like, being authentic. Oh, God. Uh, it, it really is about finding what's right that adds such a weight to everything in yeah. this movie. Because every major character is forced to confront that at some yeah. point. Yeah, and in terms of the action, too, well, there's an argument to be made of what are the best shot action sequences in any of the Marvel films. Other than Winter Soldier, this is the one one Marvel film that I really felt a super intensity. This was a suspenseful film at times. Meaningful action. Yeah. <laughs> Every time there was an action scene, it was gripping. It was more than just, cool, we're finally getting an action scene. It was intense and significant to what was at stake in mm -hmm. the moment. Not every action scene is the same. You actually get different types of set pieces and different types of action sequences in here. Every single time one of those was going on, I was really gripped by the intensity of the situation. Yeah, it's cool. That's kind of secondary to what's really at hand. Everything else is on a different plane and, and has a different, like, political weight to it, I guess, in terms of just who's fighting and why. As far as an action movie goes, it does a great job of effortlessly working it in. Yeah. <laughs> Reason to see number seven, visual effects and design. This movie has a really cool palette to it in terms of just the color like it's the most colorful marvel movie in a completely different way it's not spandex and everything yeah. and, and it's not 80s nostalgia <laughs> yeah you know this is really <laughs> mired in culture and i really appreciate this movie for it it makes it all the more distinct because of that and everything is filtered through that their technology is filtered yeah. through that the color choices are filtered the through costume that. designs the costume the makeup designs, designs yeah. are really amazing to look at you know yeah. and there's a wide variety and it's the most impressive arguably to me of all these because it's the least familiar to me the most impressive aesthetic of it is when it's honoring the african culture the cinematography in this film i think this is one of the better looking mcu films i think there's a distinct mm -hmm. look to it oftentimes in the mcu films they kind of feel like they're shot by the same people and like, yeah you know it's like yeah there's they something have a uniformity <laughs> yeah here it doesn't feel that way like there's specific types of color tints and cinematography and set designs just the imagery itself i was gripped by this film when just looking at it because it just yeah. felt i i would kind of forget i'm watching a marvel film it has its own vibe and the cinematography and the designs all kind of come together to accentuate that if there were moments where other mcu things were referenced i was never really thinking about 
about the I know, rest I wasn't of, even really aware of it. Yeah, yeah and it just wasn't in my mind. All that was in my mind was this movie and each passing moment. Yeah. And I feel like the way they captured it and the way they designed it all, like it really drinks in the design. So you really get to experience the mm -hmm. world of Wakanda as it unfolds in front of you. You know, instead of having to have somebody give you like a massive yeah. info dump here and there. And a little bit of South Korea. Reason to see number eight. The music. Ludwig Göransson of Childish Gambino fame. See, this MCU film has done something magical. What are the two biggest complaints you can get about a Marvel film? It's villain and the music it doesn't really stand out. The music in this film yeah. 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 It yeah. is it is good. <laughs> it is yeah. good. I remember watching scenes and going, kind of damn, this is a freaking great music in this movie. Yeah. yeah, and it was the kind of music I, I kind of wish some of the trailers had. It was the exact kind of music <laughs> that we would say, I wish the trailers were using this. So much yeah. of it is so percussive, and there are some modern touches on it. Every now and again when it's appropriate, yeah. like, you know, a well, synth beat will drop in. It depends where they are in the movie at the time. Yeah. If they're in Wakanda, it primarily has like that African tribe type of music. Yeah, there's a lot of percussive and a lot of like vocalization based stuff. Yeah. It's got a wide variety and without getting up in your face about it, I thought it was really a, a distinct yeah. part of the movie's DNA yeah. too. I was, it's the one MCU movie where I'm like, I would get the album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and I mean, even with Kendrick Lamar's, yeah, fits. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think it's I think it's one of the other ones too, because I think that's the one that has like Vince Staples or something on yeah. it. Everything again comes together in a really nice way, and it's yeah, it's nice to have a Marvel movie where you can point to it and go, the, the music is memorable too. Yeah, because I usually only just remember the Avengers theme. Yeah, it's because we've heard it a bunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I finally I caught up to it. Reasons not to see. Because you're a Marvel fanboy who wants his Marvel movies to be the exact way Marvel usually does their movies. Yeah, so there's no real reasons not to see this movie. <laughs> not enough white people. I might have... <laughs> yeah. I feel underrepresented. I might have had, like, a minor nitpick here or there, but overall, I, I really didn't. The reason why we're uh, making this, like, joke reason not to is because it is so different than the other Marvel films. Especially after last year, you got, like, three Marvel comedies in a row. Yeah. And then this one brings it back to more like Winter Soldier, or, where it's like, this is a pretty serious movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, one, this is a serious, intense film. <laughs> and, and this film owed nothing to the 1980s. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> every film last year owed something to the 1980s. And it's not jam packed with other Marvel character references. It's not jam packed with being aware of the bigger universe. It's not about setting up other, like, uh, his appearance in Infinity War. The fact that it's just a true standalone own origin film that takes itself really serious and when there's humor it's the right amount of humor i think people who just love going to these movies really want to show up for the fun really want to show up for that and this is a different type of fun this is a, the type of fun where you if you miss a piece of information it'll affect the way the movie feels for you <laughs> you know you gotta yeah. pay attention to this thing well and this movie also has some stuff on its mind that is weighty and that yeah. does force you relevant to and important at least yeah. a little bit think about the world and think yeah. about how we all behave as nations and stuff like that and, and think about abandonment and, and other things. Mm. There's a lot going on yeah. under the hood. And, you know, I can definitely see uh, certain people being like, I like my movies fun. Especially when you're coming off of like the last three Marvel movies we had, which were like heartfelt, fun. And, but they're mainly just fun. All right, guys. Well, there's a review of Black Panther. I mean, obviously, if you were to sum it up, since we can't really find anything wrong with the movie, I don't want to say it's perfect just yet. As I, we did just come back from the movie, and I find I can sometimes impressive. bite my words when I do, like love something off of a fresh screening. I honestly think that uh, it's a film that everyone should go check out. Probably the most important MCU film I think we've gotten. Yeah. Uses yeah. what it is to address some real life stuff. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. One more thing I wanted to do. I want to give a shout out to Adelia Chamberlain. Adelia, my dear, I know you had foot surgery a month ago. You've been going through some pretty harsh times right now in 2018. And I know sometimes you get a little bit worried about opening up to us over at our Patreon. But I want to let you know that every time we get a message from you, I love talking with you. I love chatting with you. I love hearing all the updates in your life. And I'm glad that you're really working on yourself right now and going out there and trying new things. Stay proud of yourself, homegirl, because you are one beautiful soul, and I hope you never lose that. All right, guys, so well, you can subscribe to The Real Rejects. <laughs> Click that notification bell to get notified every time one of our videos is up. Yeah, check out our Patreon. It's fun over there.